Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us start this lecture with a thought process from Henry Ford. My best friend is the one who brings out the best in me. And in the last lecture, we basically derived the expression for mass flux uh, rate from the droplet surface or the from the droplet, right? And uh, looking at little further, how we can use it for uh, determination of uh, droplet burning rate and then uh, we will be looking at also the uh, droplet uh, burning time, right. So, uh, uh, if you recall that it is very important to estimate the droplet burning time, why? Because when you are designing a combustor, you should see that all the droplets should be all consumed before it is going out of the exit of the combustor. Otherwise, it will be a, a problem in the not only the emission, but also the energy inefficiency and other things. So, uh, and as I told, it is essential for designing combustor for complete combustion residence time, right, must be greater than the lifetime of the largest droplet in the spray because you may say look there are several droplets what you will be considering when you are designing you say whatever the largest droplet is there i will have to design for that and if that is taken care then the rest of the things will be taken care right and this is of course a little ad hoc uh, kind of things and uh, but that is essential to be uh, using this as a design tool and uh, factors that dictates the factors that dictate the residence time of the droplets are basically what like uh, the air stream velocity right which uh, we have not considered and uh, we will be considering it and droplet velocity and uh, fuel injection angle and combustor geometry all those things will be taken. So, uh, if you look at the continuity you will find out the mass of this uh, uh, droplet okay, is basically consumed. So, therefore, it is getting receded the mass therefore, I am putting it negative is equal to the mass of the fuel which is getting out uh, outward it is moving out from the flame surface. And uh, this is basically equation 1 and uh, keep in mind that this uh, m d is the mass of spherical droplet right which is changing with respect to time because the radius will be changing therefore mass also will be changing and uh, i can write down that md is nothing but your mass will be rho l into v right rho l is the density of the fuel or the liquid fuel and v is the volume volume of the sphere is pi d q by 6 right and uh, as i told the d is basically the droplet diameter at any instant of time right at any instant of time and it will be changing is not it the diameter will be changing it will be receding. So, uh, now what we will have to do we will have to connect these things and uh, recall that we had derived this expression m dot uh, double dash a is equal to rho alpha divided by r s is equal to ln plus v. Now, from this I can find out what would be the m dot f because we will have to find out m dot f 
m dot f is nothing but your rho alpha by r s what I will do I will have to just multiply the surface area is not it 4 pi r s square this will cancel it out and what you will get is basically rho alpha right 2 pi d right and uh, ln b plus 1 that is the thing what you will be getting right and this is r s is uh, will be changing also right it is changing right so therefore this will be 2d uh, you know 2 pi d and uh, what I will do, we will combine these equations, right? If I will do that, what I will do? I will use this equation 1 and 2 and 3, right? I will get basically, uh, I can write down here m dot this thing is equal to is equal to minus d m d by d t, and this is nothing but here rho l pi by 6 and uh, 3 d square d by d t right. So, uh, this will cancel it out and um, this pi will cancel it out that side and anything else will cancel it out and uh, the d also will be cancel it out this d will be cancel it out yes or no. 1 d from this side to that right. Then you will get I can write down that d by d by d t is nothing but your this will be 2 will be going that 4, 4 uh, in the alpha l I can write down what k g by c p can I not write down. So, k g by rho l c p l n b plus 1. I can say this is c basically due to combustion just to uh, make that it is not due to vaporization right just to differentiate b can be same b can be used for combustion and vaporization right. Of course, some uh, kind of term will be eliminated when you are talking about combustion and also vaporization you will have to take care of that. So, uh, therefore, I will have to basically now uh, express this droplet diameter right uh, in terms of d square and that I can write down this as I can write down 2 d right I can do here to sell 2 d is nothing but uh, 2 into that right. So, uh, what I will be getting is Uh, basically d square is uh, because I can take this inside and d d square d t is equal to 8 k g by rho c p l n b plus 1 right. And uh, keep in mind that this I can call it as a k right k and k is nothing but your 8 k g rho l c p l n b c plus 1 right. And uh, if I integrate this equation 5, right, what I will get? I will get basically d square t is equal to d naught square minus k t, right. What is the, uh, right, how I am getting? Basically, what I am doing, I am getting uh, from this equation, I am getting d square is equal to minus k t plus c right with boundary condition t is equal to 0 what is d d is equal to d naught. So, when this t is 0 this is d naught square is nothing but your c right therefore, this is uh, I can write down d square uh, is equal to d naught square minus k t right this is the expression what I am getting. And this is a very simple relationship, right? 
and this is known as d square law and people have also uh, conducted experiment they have observed for most of the single fuel droplet under quiescent atmosphere follows this one roughly so if you look at these are the uh, k capital values this is basically i can say this is uh, there is some typographical error this is capital k right this will be in capital k and the, these are calculated values from the simple analysis 9.3 whereas this is coming 8.14 and 14.2 is really not very far different keeping in mind the simplicity of the analysis right that you can keep in mind now if i plot this one if i plot this this thing i will get d square by the time and this is basically the droplet diameter right this is drop droplet burning time this is droplet burning diameter now you will have to evaluate this how much time it will be taking it looks to be linear but actually it is not linear because it is goes by d square so therefore you cannot really simply calculate let's say 100 micron droplet and uh, it has uh, gone let's say 2 second and then you are going for let's say 1 mm droplet and then this will no it is not that way so therefore that has to be taken care right and this is very important to evaluate this td d not is the initial diameter of droplet right and d is the diameter which will be changing and it became zero at time td right so that is the thing you should keep in mind right so uh, right as i told earlier d square varies linearly with time and slope of plot is burning rate constant and you can have some experimental data you know you can have some uh, people generally put some data here and then try to match uh, this thing these are you can say experimental data right need not to be this thing there will be some scattered and then you will have to say okay this is the which is matching right that way it is being done so we will take an example how to evaluate right this thing and uh, keep in mind that this is uh, as i told earlier that uh, it is very important to understand how one can do that right because of fact that the transfer number although we have used quite complex relationship for finding uh, estimating the transfer number but that won't be affecting much the droplet burning rate so also the yeah, droplet uh, lifetime right time uh, lifetime of the droplet okay so uh, and for that uh, the properties which need to be looked at it so let us look at an example to illustrate that point an hexen uh, c16 h14 fuel droplet of diameter 200 micron meter is burnt in a combustors like uh, let's say uh, one atmosphere pressure and t infinity 1300 kelvin and uh, determine the lifetime of the single droplet right and uh, keep in mind that of course uh, the t adiabatic in this example should be given is something around uh, 2200 kelvin right and uh, we will have to find out to find basically droplet uh, lifetime or some people got droplet burning time or the burning duration time duration so uh, we know uh, we know that td is basically d not square by k and d not is already given given right so given is d not is given is 200 micron meter pressure is given 0.1 mega pascal t infinity is 1300 kelvin and t adiabatic is given 
okay. And what is k? k this is uh, burning rate constant right is equal to 8 kg by rho L C p L n B c plus 1 c I am using for combustion. Now, question arises how we will evaluate the properties of kg and c p because as I told the B c you can evaluate uh, you know using this formula, but here this property has to be done properly because this affect the burning constant k g and c p right rho l anyway it would not be because it is a almost constant density of the uh, liquid fuel. The generally uh, if you look at the uh, the temperature will be varying let us say there is a droplet here right the flame will be uh, flame will be little away from that right let us say this is your flame surface. Now, the temperature if I plot this temperature here right what will be this will be something temperature will be going up here right and then it will be receding. So, here it will be 2200 Kelvin and ambient temperature here is something 1300 Kelvin. So, we will have to find out the properties now properties how I will have to find it out. I will have to use some approximation right because we are doing calculation in numerical simulation the properties will be changing along with the radial direction right it will be changing. But in our case we cannot afford to do that we will use some average properties right we will be uh, evaluating properties right at average temperature and that is what we will be doing 0 0.5 T f flame temperature or adiabatic temperature I can write adiabatic temperature rather I should put uh, flame temperature because in some cases if it is uh, given the flame temperature you can take in this example we are using the adiabatic temperature ok plus the uh, T b right we will be taking the T b and T b is uh, you can find out from the this thing because we are using boiling temperature the T b is basically uh, 340 to Kelvin we are using. So, uh, plus 342 I will be getting 1271 Kelvin at this temperature I will be evaluating the thing right. Now, question arises you know you will be evaluating here, but the oxygen also having different properties fuel is having different properties what you will have to do you will have to uh, let us say uh, gas thermal kg right is to kg of the mixture right you can say of the fuel air mixture at T average is to be evaluated right. How we will do? We will be doing k g is equal to 0 0.4 k f right plus 0 0.6 k oxidizer. Keep in mind that this relationship is not very sacrosanct you can use some different thing, but people lot of people have used this approximation we are doing instead of 0.4 I can say look I will be using maybe 0.3 and then 0.7 the other one that can be done, but the people have used so therefore we are using this. Now each one of them Kf and Kox will be evaluated at what at this temperature 1 to 7 1 Kelvin. Now, uh, these values is not given, but you can get uh, in the some uh, table right I will be using directly now 4 into 0 0.18 for k f plus 0 0.6 into 0 0.08 oxidizer here basically air and that happens to be 0 0.12 watt per meter Kelvin right. And similarly, um, C p you will have to also evaluate 
but CP what we are taking is basically the fuel right CPF we are considering of course uh, F we are considering as 1.19 kilojoule per kg and Kelvin at the average 1271 Kelvin. Otherwise, similar uh, formula can be done, but in this example, I am just taking that way, right. Uh, what I am saying, there is another way of doing it, like in the similar way, I can write down Cp uh, is basically uh, 0 0.4 Cp F plus 0 0.6 Cp of oxidizer. I can do that, but I have just taken for the simplicity right this can also be done are you getting and at the average is equal to 1 to 7 1 Kelvin in this example I am using this thing ok. So, <coughs> now delta H V is also should be given or you will have to find out from the data table that is your 316 kilo joule per kg and the heat of combustion has to be given delta S C is equal to 45,000 uh, that is kilo joule per kg right. So, uh, what we will have to do, we will have to basically evaluate the uh, V, uh, the transfer number, this we can use any one of them, but we are using O x t is equal to C p t infinity minus T s plus delta S c f y oxidizer infinity divided by delta h v right. So, a t infinity is given this is given you have already evaluated C p. So, you can find out uh, this thing right you can find out delta s c is given and y oxygen infinity is known to you right and delta h v uh, you can find it out right. So, uh, but you need to find out F right because this is uh, you can find out from oxygen air what it will be. So, uh, then F has to be found out F for that you will have to use stoichiometric oxidizer uh, this is fuel right uh, ratio it is uh, F is fuel oxidizer ratio right now. Okay, oxidizer fuel ratio you can write down new uh, as uh, new is equal to x plus y by 4, 4 4.76 molecular weight of air. You can do uh, other way around also, this is a direct formula I am using, and if you uh, substitute these values, you will get 15.16 that means f will be 1 by nu is nothing but your 0 0.0658 right and what i'll do i'll substitute all these values here and when i do the substitute values right 1.19 this is 1300 minus 342 plus 45000 into 0 0.0658 into 0 0.232 that is your oxidizer right divided by the 316 you will get something 5.78 right and then uh, from this you can find out basically k right by using this equation I can say this is equation 1 and this is 2 uh, by using equation uh, 2, we can get basically k as 8 kg rho L C p L n B c plus 1 right. So, that will be 8 into 0 0.12 rho L is uh, density is not given, but uh, you know you will have to find out that is 6 40 uh, kg per meter cube 
right 6640 into 1190 right uh, cp this is kilojoule i am putting in uh, joule so right this will be ln 5.78 plus 1 you will get a very small value right 10 power to minus 6 meter square per second is a meter square so it will be very very small you can look at this burning rate constant then after that you will find out td is basically d naught square by k and this you will get is 0 0.017 right so uh, when you substitute these values you will find it is a very very small time and this is second okay and if it is a droplet uh, size is bigger then it will take more time keep in mind that uh, this is quiescent atmosphere there might be turbulence there might be flow which will be affecting the things and also uh, the droplet might be interacting so the time will be different you know but however as i told it can be used as a design tool right uh, so uh, till now we have discussed about basically under the quiescent atmosphere now we will see how we can utilize those relationship and uh, look at to estimate the mass burning rate of the droplet when subjected to convective environment right so that we will be looking at because it is very important to do that from the practical point of view right so uh, because both the free and force convection will be prevailing uh, in the practical devices uh, so for flow past a fuel when you look at a droplet flow past the fuel droplet uh, when the its Reynolds number is greater than 20 this effect will be more predominant and this Reynolds number is basically based on the diameter of the droplet right if I say this is basically R e d rho v d by mu right and this you can say v infinity this will be v infinity like which is having right that one can think of so if it is uh, less than that it will be not having much effect that people have found out so uh, then the what will happen once it is greater than this the front portion of the droplet will be like that you know it will be coming and there is a boundary layer uh, this is of course your flame front the temperature you can say thermal boundary layer but there will be also aerodynamic boundary layer which i have not shown and there is a wake region here you know like there will be some uh, kind of a vortices will be formed particularly downstream of here right uh, the droplet okay not that place at least here huh? okay uh, not that far okay so this region is very important but we will be not uh, considering this wake region because this will be inherently three dimensional in nature okay so therefore that will be a little difficult what we will be looking at uh, the basically looking at the practical devices where the force convection is more predominant and what we will be doing we will be looking at basically boundary condition right and then trying to uh, look at how we can uh, estimate those things by just tweaking uh, or rather applying the boundary condition at the droplet surface so if you look at what you will be uh, so this is the expression if you look at sc sc is basically if i look at the uh, at the boundary condition what will happening this uh, you know like heat transfer this is the heat transfer coefficient right sc into delta t there will be some temperature let us look at this uh, balance at the uh, droplet surface uh, we are looking at where there will be some heat will be convected right because of uh, uh, the temperature gradient which will be there and that is being converting that is affecting that is sc sc is basically uh, convective heat transfer coefficient keep in mind that this i have taken average because this will be changing right and delta t is the temperature gradient with which the heat will be convected right that is the thing and we will see how we can get the delta t uh, if you look at uh, this term then is equal to 
the mass flux at the surface and this is nothing but your m dot f at surface into delta h b that is the heat of vaporization right is equal to basically same thing uh, the mass of the uh, mass conjunction of the fuel at the surface into the surface area right that is nothing but that and uh, that we have already seen that is uh, nothing but this expression is rho alpha l r s l n 1 plus b c i can say this is for combustion right into delta h b see this is we are using cushion atmosphere and trying to connect to the heat convected due to the force convection that is the thing what we are trying to do and this delta t if you look at basically delta t is nothing but your f stoichiometry y oxygen at the infinity delta s c divided by c b right this is the amount of heat which will be generated due to what due to flame front and this is the heat which will be coming from uh, this t s to this thing that will be also convected so uh, therefore you can uh, this is the driving potential because this is the driving potential for convective heat transfer because without temperature gradient you cannot have uh, convective heat transfer so therefore that is and uh, you keep in mind that by uh, increasing the t right uh, due to the chemical reactions you can really enhance the uh, mass congestion of the droplet like if tempera uh, temperature of the flame is higher then naturally what will happen more heat will be transferred and then uh, because of convection it will be reaching and then it will be affecting the uh, droplet burning rate right so what we will do we will basically look at this is uh, equation 1 now we will substitute this delta t in this equation 1 right and combine these two expression what I will get I am basically writing down uh, these things right f stoichiometry as delta S c into C p and then divided by C p is equal to this and uh, if you look at I can write down this term you know, like uh, as a little different way but before doing that let me tell you that this is basically a smaller term right it is uh, quite small as compared to this term the left hand this is due to the combustion the heat release is, is very 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 high so uh, i can write down that basically uh, this h this will be uh, kind of a also the b uh, right so this will be if i look at this what i can write down this as basically f stoichiometric y oxidizer infinity delta s c if that is 0 then divided by c p right this is the term what it would be and uh, right so uh, of course i can do if it is approximately but however we can write down this expression as little different form that is s c average r s by uh, this is k g right if i take this i will be getting because this alpha this one is nothing but your k g by c p right so this uh, rho alpha is k g by c p so it will cancel it out so k g will come and then uh, i will get is equal to l n b plus 1 right divided by this is the term right f stoichiometric i am retaining the whole term delta s c plus c p t infinity minus t uh, this thing and uh, keep in mind that divided by delta h b this you will find it is basically similar to the b right this term you can see is basically b number so i can write down this is ln 
b plus 1 divided by b and keep in mind that this can you say what is that this is basically Nusselt number right based on what based on rs if i say this is based on rs this is nothing but your Nusselt number so i can write down this expression as nu rs is equal to basically ln b plus 1 divided by b is a very simple expression what we are just deriving for by balancing okay uh, so we'll stop over here in the next lecture we'll be discussing little bit about uh, this thing and then uh, we'll be moving to some other topic okay thank you very much